I love map making tools. Ever since Little Rig played Tenshu 2 on the PlayStation 1, I've been hooked on finding games that allow players to create and share their own maps. Halo Reach, Skate 3, hell, Valve's entire library. But no game has quite the storied history of user-generated maps like Doom. Doom's custom mapping scene is legendary, to the point where people are still making maps for it almost 30 years later. With the invention of WAD files, players were able to package their very own maps up onto a floppy disk and give it to their friends, who were probably amazed by the technological wizardry required to make a map in 94 while working with this. <sighs> and a lot of Doom's players at the time experienced custom content by buying level packs, which were discs full of hundreds, if not thousands, of WADs ripped straight from forums online and sold in stores. These things were basically legal bootlegging. Nowadays, if you did something like this, you would probably wake up to a horde of lawyers just frothing at the mouth to sue your ass and your boss. Of course, with their identity being so closely tied to giving players modding tools, it was only natural for id Software to bring a map editor into Doom's reboot. So the technical team at id said, I bet, and delivered a mapping tool that's so easy to pick up, anybody could build their own campaign in a matter of hours. It gave players complete control over the game and made way for some truly amazing creations. However, all through its lifespan, it was overlooked next to its contemporaries, and nowadays, it's a ghost town. You're lucky to find anybody playing it. That map editor was Doom Snap Map. This deceptively advanced map creator was the last of Doom's game modes, following the God Tier campaign and criminally underrated multiplayer. Snap Map was largely overlooked by the majority of the Doom community, and a sizable number of fans dismissed it as nothing more than just a toy, offering nothing of real value to the game whatsoever. But under the hood, this map tool was way more complex than people gave it credit for, and I'm here to tell you why Doom Snap Map is better than you remember. Starting with the menus, I gotta say we're not off to a great start here. These menus are cluttered with mostly useless playlists and a lot of flavor text. I will give this game credit where it's due, the customization is second to none. Doom 2016 nailed armor customization better than Halo Infinite ever could years before it ever came out. And the best part? You can unlock most of this armor by just playing user-made maps. No item shop here. Naturally, given this much customization, I chose to make my guy look as close to Phobos as possible. Good God, why? For one, because it looks super cool. Making simple maps on Snap Map is a breeze. It's broken up into two modes. Blueprint and Object Mode. Blueprint Mode lets you snap together pre-generated modules to create unique level layouts. These modules can then be edited or swapped out after you put the rest of the map together. Some of these modules are ripped straight from the campaign, but most of them were made specifically for Snap Map. I gotta say, some of these modules look awesome. Thanks to id Tech 6's glorious levels of optimization, the graphics look beautiful. I could have a few of these set as my PC's background. In object mode, you're able to place a metric shit ton of stuff into the map. Terrain, props, weapons, enemies, which under any other circumstances would be perfectly fine for a mapping tool. But where Snap Map really went above and beyond is when they gave players full control over the game's logic and AI. In doing so, they gave players infinite possibilities. Logic chaining lets you assign certain parameters to be set when events happen in your map. They can be tied to a number of things. Invisible triggers, buttons, doors, even on specific enemies getting fragged. Using this logic chain mode can be a bit confusing at times, especially when you have huge webs of chains spanning across your entire level, but the results are pretty sweet. The ability to script AI combat encounters into your map is something most games would have never given their fans, but Doom said, Nah man, here you go kids, now don't have too much fun with this. I remember making long-winded easter eggs with this logic chain mode, though I guarantee no one who ever played my maps found any of them. Even I forgot where they are. In addition to making maps, you're able to script your own game modes. I vividly remember playing a tower defense game mode when Snap Map first launched. There were plenty of custom game modes to choose from, but some talented mappers were able to go even further beyond and script cutscenes into their maps. <laughs> Players who mastered complete control over the game's systems created some truly amazing things. Someone managed to get 
Tetris running in Doom. Most snap maps play really well, thanks to Doom 2016's core gameplay loop just being so damn fun. Having a nearly limitless supply of unique campaigns means that we have a nearly limitless supply of Doom 2016, which, in my humble opinion, is always a good thing. Some of these multi-level campaigns have production values rivaling that of AAA games released today. I've spent quite a bit of time playing maps in the review queue, which is a list of recently published maps that still need to be rated. When it comes to playing custom maps, my personal go-to are the ones that are tagged with custom geometry. This means that they utilize new layouts and even new gameplay features. Playing a snap map is one thing, but making one is a completely different wheelhouse. So I embarked on a scientific endeavor, one that would take me back to the lab again. For this video, I spent a few days making my own level, and let me tell you, this was a far larger undertaking than I had initially expected. It's been years since I've even touched Doom, let alone used Snap Map. While I had made a couple of simple courses to clear on my own back in the day, I never designed a level to be played by someone else. So I set forth to make a scripted co-op campaign mission, all while relearning Snap Map scripting on the fly. First and foremost, I lost track of time super easily in this mode. Sprinkling details all around the facility was something I found myself getting carried away with time and time again. Sprinkle some skeletons here, some paint there, a couple of logic chains, the works. These little touches can really add to the vibe of your map, and I found it was really easy to weave together some pretty good environmental storytelling. After learning the basics, I got into the flow of mapping, and next thing I knew, it was 2am and I was getting done giving six lucky scientists the spiciest bath of their lives. It's crazy how intricately I had to time some of these logic chains together to make a cohesive string. Just making the intro for my map took hours of webbing these chains together. Thankfully, you can load your level up straight from the editor and playtest your changes on the spot. This feature came in handy for testing certain scripts in the map, especially the objective markers. After a day and a half of rigorous editing and playtesting, my map was finally complete and ready to publish. This is Hazard Lab. In this co-op level, you play as a UAC hazmat crew tasked with cleaning out a simple gas leak. And zombies, because those are cool too. While you're clearing out the zombie infestation, the air filtration system's battery explodes, flooding the room in hazardous chemicals. You're then contacted by Dr. Samuel Hayden, who tasks you with entering the lab's toxic waste refinery to get a replacement battery. However, hell isn't going to let you barge into their newly claimed territory and take their ill-gotten gains back. Everything's better with friends, and playing custom Doom maps is no different. For this video, I enlisted the help of my friend, Yoink, who's never played Snap Map before. His Twitch will be linked in the description. Go give him a follow. He's one of the funniest dudes I've ever met, and a true homie by every sense of the word. During our time playing Hazard Lab, my game crashed and he was left to fend for himself. Thankfully, I was able to follow along on his stream, making mental notes of any issues he ran into. I imagine this is how game developers feel during playtests. The feedback I got from him directly helped solve a bunch of issues that I had overlooked while playing in the editor myself. I'd like to believe that I did a decent job in my first map in six years. All in all, Snap Map is a quality mapping tool that just missed out on mass appeal. Its lack of user interest could have stemmed from a number of things, being overshadowed by the campaign, having far too advanced systems for the average player to learn, I mean, even the pedigree that it came from, this is a far cry from the Doom Builder of yesteryear. But on its own, removed from the rest of the series, Snap Map stands out among its peers and is probably the most in-depth mapping tool in a modern FPS. Its small but dedicated community still makes technically impressive maps to this day, and there's a plethora of backlog to choose from. If you ever find yourself playing Doom 2016, fire up Snap Map and give it a try.